Good morning, everyone. I'm wearing a silly wig, as you can see. I'll explain that in just a second. I'm talking to you this morning about well-being and your mental health. One of the things that we're really concerned about with you being away from your friends for so long is you feeling isolated, feeling alone, and they can lead to feelings of stress and anxiety and worrying, which is not good for anybody. One of the ways in which many people relax is painting. I know that one of the ways that I can sometimes relax is with the help of my singing bowl. If you've not seen a, seen a singing bowl before, it's a Tibetan way of relaxing. You strike the bowl, move the stick around the bowl, and the bowl will start to sing to you. I will show you that in just a second. My thanks go to Mr Swinney for holding his meditation class this week, which was very well received. He had lots of positive feedback and I think that's going to be repeated. So if you are interested in meditation or thinking of ways to help calm yourself, then please do uh, look at Mr Swinney's meditation classes as they continue. Now the reason I'm wearing this silly wig, it's uh, because of a guy called Bob Ross. Now most of you will not have heard of Bob Ross, but Bob Ross was a man who was in the American Air Force during the 1960s, during the Vietnam War. And he was um, the equivalent of a sergeant major and he spent most of his time shouting at his soldiers or his airmen, uh, getting them to do the things that he needed them to do. That could be cleaning the latrines, the toilets, um, it could be polishing their shoes, it could be giving them orders about engineering on the aircraft. When Bob left the army in the late 1970s, he decided that he was going to become an artist, something that had been a hobby for years. And he said that when he left the army, he was never going to shout again. Now, Bob famously created a television program called The Joy of Painting. And if any of you have ever seen The Joy of Painting, you will know exactly what I am talking about when I describe his calmness. If you have never seen The Joy of Painting, I highly recommend that you go to YouTube and watch it. So just type in The Joy of Painting, Bob Ross, and you will see an episode. Now, every episode is pretty much the same. Bob is there with his paintbrush, a paintbrush a bit bigger than this one, a two-inch paintbrush, and he simply paints a canvas. And he loves it, and that's the best thing about it. He's calm, he speaks slowly, and he paints, paints a, a picture which is good, not brilliant, not a masterpiece, but it's good, but it's the joy and the relaxation. So if you watch The Joy of Painting, I promise you that you will find it a zen-like experience. It will certainly relax you. But even better than The Joy of Painting is actually going outside and doing some painting yourself. So if you have an easel or not, it doesn't really matter. Grab some paints, grab a sketchbook, grab a pencil, charcoal, oil pastels, chalks, it doesn't really matter what you use, and take a piece of paper, take your canvas, go outside and do some drawing and do some painting, and I promise you that it will be something that relaxes you and helps to calm anxieties and worries and fears. Now today I'm also here to launch our next community initiative. Firstly, thank you very, very much for all of the All You Need Is Love videos. We have got about 20 videos so far, but we do need more. Now, with that in mind, we're going to extend the deadline for the submission of the videos from today, Monday the 18th, through to the end of the half-term holiday. So the, the films need to come back by the Monday that we return to school after half-term, which I believe is June the 1st. So that's the, the new deadline for those films. So please do contribute. You've got plenty of time now over half term to, to do that. Don't worry about it. Don't be shy. Have a go at it. Sing, dance, play an instrument. doesn't really matter. It's all about the community involvement. Thank you to everybody who's already responded. Please do keep your films, um, if you have sent them in, just in case we have got a problem with them when we start putting them together after the half term holiday. So today's community initiative, what you need to do is you need over the half term, if you would like to, to paint a teacher. That's the challenge. Um, we will show as many of the paintings as we possibly can do. It could be a painting, it could be a drawing. The only rule in, in this whole thing is that you have to be a painting which is aiming to be complementary to your teachers. So don't please produce any paintings that could be seen as insulting, um, deliberately insulting or otherwise because they won't be shown. Um, but if you would like to create a drawing or a painting of your teachers, we would love to see them and uh, we will display as many as we can in the OBH email. So be a Bob Ross. Don't have to wear a wig. Um, he's a really good guy. Do watch his program. And that's it for me for this week. And I'm now gonna hand over to Reverend Tiffler, who's got a special message for everybody. Hello uh, to uh, staff and students and parents of Old Buckingham Hall School. Uh, I'm Reverend Tiffler, for those who don't know me. 
uh, and the independent listener for the school and the local parish priest as well. Uh, it's been a very strange few weeks, as I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, and I've really missed seeing, uh, seeing you either at assembly in school, which I tend to come in once a term or so, uh, or was preparing some students for confirmation, which sadly will, no, will probably not take place uh, this term. Uh, and uh, also some uh, students at the weekend's weekend boarders come to services here in Rattleston uh, Church, in Bretnam Church, and in Thorpe Maru, and occasionally Hitcham. So it's lovely to see you when I'm able to see you, but sadly not this term. Uh, just to say a little bit about what has been happening with us, uh, church buildings are closed to the public uh, by the government, uh, although uh, I'm able to come in to stream services now and to, uh, to um, lead some things. So I've just had an even song service with only about eight people, uh, including one former parishioner from Italy, uh, my own uh, mother and father-in-law from France, and then a couple of parishioners, uh, one in uh, Hitcham, one in uh, uh, up the road in Woolpit, and um, uh, one in Bretnam. So uh, it's a very strange way to worship together. It's not the same, it doesn't feel quite right, and yet, with the wonders of technology, we're able to do uh, some of uh, what we would normally do. And in the morning, we have a service over Zoom, which is a teleconferencing app. I'm sure some of you have used it. Uh, and we get about 90 people uh, to that, which is about what we normally would get on a Sunday across the four churches. Just a short 15, 20 minute service uh, with a hymn and uh, a reading and a, sermon, a very short sermon and some prayers. Uh, and then a family service we do at 10.30 as well, which you'd all be very welcome to. Of course, any of our services would be welcome. Uh, do let, get in touch if you want uh, to know the details about links and timings. And that's for mainly younger children uh, doing crafts and having stories together. So we are still working hard, uh, still organising shopping for people who need it, uh, and generally being a point of contact in the communities. Uh, and many church people are volunteering here for the local shops, which are... Uh, which are doing a fantastic job. Our two little village shops in Hitcher and Rattleston at uh, feeding people, uh, delivering food to people who aren't allowed to go out, uh, they're shielding or they're vulnerable. Uh, and I'm really pleased to know, see that so many of our church volunteers are volunteering with them. Uh, but all of this leaves us feeling very strange uh, and uh, a, a bit worried, I'm sure. Uh, but we do have hope uh, that one day we'll be able to meet again uh, in a, a meaningful way but we also have hope, I have hope, that God is looking out for us, uh, that we will come through this, and uh, uh, that hopefully God will teach us something, even in the struggle and the suffering of this time. I don't know if you've lost uh, anyone uh, uh, that you know uh, to this dreaded disease, or for any other reason either, or if you know someone who's been uh, ill or poorly as a result. Uh, but I'm just going to say a prayer now for all of us, uh, and please, if you do agree with it, do say so uh, at the end by saying Amen. Lord, we thank you that you are with us even in times of suffering and trial and struggle. And we thank you that we can trust in you and call on your name. We do pray that you would take this uh, illness, this COVID-19 away uh, from our nation. You would help us to put the right things in place to be able to live with it in the meantime. And we do pray for all those who have died and for their friends and family. We pray for those who are ill at this time, that they would recover. And we give thanks for our medical staff and emergency services uh, and for all those who are working so hard at some personal risk to uh, help others. Lord, we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Well, it's been lovely to join with you in this slightly strange way. Uh, uh, from here at St Nicholas Church uh, and uh, I wish you all the best. God bless. Bye-bye.